Hi, my name is Jacob Card. I'm the curator over here at the Institute of Military Technology. And today we're gonna to be looking at some of the American weapons of the Spanish-American War. I think that in terms of what was else out there at the time, um, the weaponry issued to the soldiers in the Spanish-American War was probably some of the worst weaponry that we ever issued out to our soldiers. Uh, it was so bad that despite the fact that we really handily beat the Spanish during the war, we pretty much completely reevaluated and changed all of our small arms that we had previously. So the primary issue handgun for the Army in the Spanish-American War was the Colt New Model Army, or the M1892. Now design-wise, this was a fantastic revolver. This is the first modern revolver with a swing-out cylinder, you know, which allowed it to be loaded much faster than most of the single action revolvers, plus it was single action and double action, so you had kind of the, the choice to, you know, for more precise shots or faster follow-up shots. The problem with this was the cartridge. This shoots 38 long Colt, which has about half the foot-pound stopping power of a 9x19 Parabellum. And in terms of a six-shot revolver, that's really just not acceptable. In fact, these were so poorly liked that they actually switched back to the M1873 single action army for the conflict. So here we have the legendary M1873 Colt single action army, an icon of the American West and one of the most important handguns of all time. While it's one of the best handguns of its day, by 1898 it was seriously showing its age due to the black powder cartridge and the reloading gate system, which is much slower than a swing out cylinder. Despite that, the cartridge, the 45 long Colt, was much better than what was in the 38 than 1892. So because of that, they actually issued these out alongside its newer cousin, the Colt New Model Army. So here we have the M1896 Krag, which was, in theory, the service rifle at the time. But in reality, most troops would have been equipped with the Springfield Trapdoor Rifles, a thoroughly obsolete weapon. So while the Krag was certainly better than that, it's not hard to improve on garbage. So the big problem with this was the loading gate system. So while the Spanish had the M1893 Mauser, which is clip-fed, you load all the bullets in at once, it's much easier. This had a special loading gate because the Ordnance Board wanted to deliberately slow down how fast troops were firing, which never works. So you have to single load or basically dump all the cartridges into this loading gate, snap it up, and then you're good to go. But it takes much longer, so, and it's much more complicated, so it's really easy to fumble in the heat of battle. So at you know, the battlefield of San, San Juan Hill, um, you'll see a lot of 30, 40 crag cartridges kind of scattered around. Pretty much after the war, we copied the Mauser with the 1903 Springfield because it was such a better gun than this gun. So here we have the Trapdoor Springfield. So there was an acute shortage of Krag rifles to go around. So most of the volunteer troops at the time were actually issued the Trapdoor Springfield. So these single shot black powder rifles were really woefully obsolete at this time. And they weren't even really all that great when they were first issued out. So the, it wasn't a particularly good breech loader because you have to swing out and you have to separately eject the cartridge. Whereas with a lot of other ones, they do all of that work for you. So what's interesting is that pretty much every variant of the trapdoor would have been seen. So you have, you know, of course, the first in the 1873, and then you have this one, which is the latest version, the M1888, which was adopted two years after the French adopted the M1889 Lebel. So to me, that kind of shows it's the epitome of how backwards thinking the U.S. Ordnance Board was at the time. So two Colt Browning M1895 potato diggers were purchased and brought to Cuba by the 1st Volunteer Cavalry, also known as the Rough Riders. So they were called potato diggers because the swimming piston was apparently similar to an 1890s potato digger. Not that I know what that looks like, um, but I assume that's what it looked like. So these guns were actually privately purchased by Sergeant William Tiffany of the famous Jeweler family. And what's interesting is that they were chambered in 7mm Spanish, which was a very popular export cartridge at the time. So surprisingly for these two guns and just the battle in general, um, no, no side during the conflict used true automatic weapons despite the fact that they were, had been around for about a decade at this point. So here we have the Gatling gun. So this is an M1900, but the one that would have been used would have been an M1895, very similar. So a battery of these weapons were deployed at the Battle of San Juan Huil, where the suppression fire they provide proved decisive in turning the tide of the battle. So these weapons were still hand-cranked, extremely heavy weapons, more akin to heavy artillery than a proper machine gun. But I wouldn't quite say that they were obsolescent at the time. Maybe they were kind of on the, the cusp of being obsolete, but they still had their place because true automatic weapons were still pretty rare at the time. So any kind of mass, you know, mass fire was still very effective. 
but certainly by the time of the First World War, these would have been woefully obsolete. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it, found it informative, and stay tuned for more videos here from us at IMT.